Welcome to Let's Make a Game Platformer, episode 33. In the last episode, I've improved the rendering of entities, so now they can have custom models. Uh, and in the tradition of switching to a different thing, today I'd like to work a bit about on music and playing audio effects and stuff like that. So let's start off by uh, playing a background music. I've downloaded a couple of free files that I'll be using today. This is a background music here that I'll be using. This is courtesy of pixelsphere.org and the Scenic project at scenicmusic.com. And uh, there's a plenty of free uh, resources you can find on the web. Uh, for example, opengameart.org has a lot of uh, models, pixel art, sound effects, music. They have various different uh, licenses you have to follow, but they are all free in some way or another. I've asked the permission of the Scenic Project owner, and he gave me permission to use it in this YouTube series. Okay, so uh, with that out of the way, let's make it actually work. So in the gameplay module, I add here an audio package. And I'll here create a audio system. I'll of course register it in the gameplay. And profile and to play background music because we want to play it all the time. I'll just start it in initialize method. So the way we load a music file is extremely simple in GDX. GDX .audio new music, and then you pass a file handler to it when you do files internal audio slash music jewels OGG. The GDX supports a couple of different uh, file types. Uh, WAVE, MP3, and OGG, where OGG is like the most uh, common when it comes to games. Okay, this gives me a music object, and on that music object I can do set looping true, because I want to play it continuously, and I will do play. And that should get the music playing in the background, so let's start it off. Okay, this is extremely loud, as you can see. However, the music in here has also set volume, where you pass value from 0 to 1, where 0 is completely silent, 1 is the loudest you can get. So let's set here 0 0.3. That's much better. That's much better, but let's maybe make it 0 0.1. Okay, that's less intrusive. Okay, that sounds good. Now, uh, what you would expect is um, menu having, allowing you to modify this volume. So let me go to the menu, uh, context, and the main menu system. And for now, I'll make it all on one screen, the new game button and the choosing the volume. So first of all, I will Um, I will load, so I want to add sliders, so something that you can slide left and right to increase or decrease the volume. So the way I'll do it, first of all, I have to load a new image, or ensure it's created, loaded into the UI uh, texture atlas, slider background PNG. And I'll create a nine patch for it, slider background. Background PNG. It's a nine patch for it, and then I will create a slider style. 
and slider style background is new inline patch drawable slider background and the knob that you're actually moving is nine patch drawable button up and knob over button over so we reuse the same one that we use for button to render the slider and now i'll create a slider so zero is the minimum as i said the volume is zero to one and step size 0 0.01 it's going to be horizontal so not vertical and we'll have a slider style okay uh so i want to have two sliders i want to have master volume and i want to have music volume so let's do it master slider and uh, music slider Okay, so we have these. I'll set the default value for the, the master slider to be the volume that we have here, so 0 0.1. This is a sensible default. And music slider set value 1. Okay, so this is going to be the default. And in here, I will create a so first of all I want to start a new row of the table and I was also want to have to label them because by default the slider is just a slider and there is no text at it at all so I want to label them so label style first font I will use the same font that we have for buttons and I don't have to specify the color. I think that's what's in the minimum. And now I'll add new font, new label, passing a master volume and the label style. And I'll add the master slider. Then another row to the table, and I'll add label music volume music slider. Okay, ah, sorry, music not labels, label style, and add new music slider. So another thing is that in, in this table, in the first row, we have just one component. And in the next two rows, we have two components. So I have to mod modify this to say that call span of this one is going to be two. Otherwise, it's going to be squeezed only to the master volume rather than be the way you'd imagine it to have. OK, so let's maybe take a look at it, how it looks. And then we'll add, add make it work. But first, let's make it look the way we want it to look. Okay, that looks good. Uh, probably should be better on a separate screen, but we can do it later. Okay, so we got these covered. Now we have to make them work. So to do that, uh, master slider, add listener. I think it's change listener. Let me take a look at this. Change event, yes. So when the master slider is the value is changed, we will create get rendering and send. Um, let me create a new event here. Uh, master volume set. Uh, 
and music volume set. So in here I'll set new send new master volume set master slider get volume get value sorry and this has to extend event both of them okay and the same thing for the music slider I'll do it before I set the value, so I think the listener will be notified about this. And now in the gameplay audio, I'll create an interface. Set master volume. and set music volume. Okay, and this system will, first of all, share it. This interface and has to implement it as well. Implement it to me. Dots master volume equals volume, and here music volume equals volume. Okay, we got this. Uh, now I have to make this into a variable for background music. Let's call it background music. I will not set it here. However, in here, I'll do background music, set volume, it's gonna be master volume multiplied by music volume. So they both will have an effect on it. So if master volume is gonna be half, so 0 0.5, and music volume is gonna be 0 0.5, then the effect volume of this background music is going to be 0 0.25. If master volume is completely mute, so 0, or music volume is completely mute, and so 0, the background music volume will be 0 as well. And in the same here, master volume equals music, uh, music volume. Maybe I'll extract this method. Music volume. Okay. And now, so now I'm send, sending this to events, but nothing is catching them. At the moment, it's the game state switcher is something that's aware of the other, uh, other context. So let's add it here. So in here on every tick. So first of all, I will be receive event void um, master volume changed master volume set so I will be let me just accumulate them so maybe volume set Last volume event, last master volume event, music volume, last music volume event. 
and in here I'll do last master volume event equals event and the same thing for music volume changed music volume set event and it gets last music volume event equals event and in here I'll do if so on every tick when we are asking whether we should do something with this context I'll do if last master volume event is not null we will get the gameplay context get system it was audio manager set master volume get volume and set the master to null because we processed this event already music gameplay context get system audio manager set music volume last music get volume last music volume event null okay so first of all now our menu allows us to set it we pass this information to the game state switcher and the game state switcher works on the game playing context to ensure that the audio system is correctly set up with the volume. Okay, let me run it. Yeah, so it's working fine. The only problem is that the, at the beginning the volume is deafening. That's because the initial method starts playing it. However, the events from changing it actually come when the menu is, show, is shown, which is considerably later after the whole uh, after the splash screens are finished. So I'll change it so that but at the beginning the volume of the background music is going to be zero. And this should completely mute it until the menu shows up. Which is probably a good thing anyway. Awesome. Okay, now maybe let's add another thing there. It's going to be a slider for effects volume. So slider, effects for slider. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, slider style, FX slider listener, change listener, and I'll create a new event, FX volume set, and it's just going to be sent here. And let's set a default for it. And the default is going to be one as well, so the same as, as music. It's just the master is going to be much quieter at the beginning. OK, so we have this. Now I have to make sure that we're going to be passing this. And this is gonna be the same except it's gonna say last effects. And set fx volume. I have to add this method interface and implement it here well I have this uh, change does not uh, at all have any impact on the background music so I don't have to do this calculation of 
background music here. And now let's maybe add something that will allow us to play an audio, play a, an effect. So, first of all, if you take a look here at the audio, it has new sound as well. The difference between music and sound is music is that if you call play on the same object multiple times, the music will be played only once. So it's going to be, there wouldn't be any duplication of sound at the same play at the same time at different moments in the, in the music file. However, the sound class, the sound class here, the difference is if you call it to play it twice, you will have duplicated sound played. So this is because, well, for example, if you're shooting and uh, shooting some kind of ammo and the sound of the ammo from the last shoot, last being last being shot has not died off yet because it's still being playing, still being played. When you shoot again at the same time, uh, when you shoot again, you would expect this to also play second time because well, you wanted the imme immediate feedback, even though it's already playing. Uh, so that's the difference between music and audio. So in here, in audio manager, I'll add play sound. And I'll implement the method here. And the way what we're going to do is sound play and you specify the volume, which is FX volume multiplied by master volume. So now, for example, I have here the jump effect here. So in the keyboard system, I'll inject the audio manager. And whenever a player jumps, I will ask Audio Manager to play a sound. And in the initialize here, I will load the sound. So it's going to be GTX files, internal audio slash SFX jump GG. And I will pass the jump sound to be played. OK, so let's see how it worked. Oh, maybe I forgot to, I believe, add the, yeah, forgot to add the. New row. So under music, we'll have table add new label FX volume, label style, table add FX slide. So we have a slider here. Okay, this is not loud enough. So I'll increase this and decrease this. So you can clearly see the jump effect. Okay. Okay, that's it for this episode. Make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Twitter. A link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.